Yo, what is up guys and welcome back to another episode of Slice of Shonen. I am your host, The Cloudy Crow, and today we'll be reacting to Higurashi When They Cry, Sotsu, Episode 8. And in the last episode, we finally got to witness some of Dark Lord Satoko's true genius. This entire plan, everything that's been going on in um, Oni Akashi, Wata Akashi, and now Tatari Akashi have all been planned beforehand by Satoko and now she's just enacting her plan, putting her pawns in the right places in order to ultimately try to convince Rika to stay in Hinamizawa. And right now is actually the closest that she's gotten so far because we see her talking with Rika, they're having a bit of a one-on-one -on -one, and then Rika actually breaks down. And then Rika actually breaks down and she's like asking why all these horrible things are happening to her, why every time no matter matter how many times she loops, things seem to go terribly wrong, and Satoko throws out the idea that maybe she's being punished for something, and then she brings up the fact that Rika thought about leaving Hinamizawa, but ultimately that entire situation ended with Rika like hugging Satoko and kind of crying into her arms saying, thank you Satoko, which Boy, would she be thinking differently if she actually knew that Satoko was the one that was foiling all of her plans. But anyways, let's get into what her plan is exactly. So, her plan, at least in this arc, was for her to go and approach Tepe. And then once she got to him, she told Tepe that she wanted him to come and live with her in Hinamizawa. Because lately, all of the villagers in Hinamizawa have been uh, bullying her because she's a host. And this is what makes Satoko's plan so genius because it's such a believable lie. Tepe knows that they aren't very fond of the Hojos and he started to think like, oh man, I just abandoned Satoko there and she's been facing all of this pain and suffering without anyone to protect her and so now he's taking care of her in Hinamizawa. And then Satoko moves on to step two, which is her going up to Rika in the middle of the night and she's saying like, I can't stay here any longer, I actually can't Came here to grab my bags and stuff because Tepe's back in town and I'm living with him. And I love this part. This is probably my favorite part of all of last episode because we know that she's trying to play it off as if Tepe randomly came back into town and now he's dragging Satoko to come and live with her and she doesn't have an option. When in actuality, Satoko went and asked him to come to Hinamizawa to take care of her. So this is just a taste of how manipulative Satoko can be, and I can't wait to see more because Satoko is honestly one of my favorite characters aside from Mion. So, if you guys are excited for the episode, make sure to leave a like. It'll help me and the video out so much more than you might think. So if you could take the time to do that real quick, I would very much appreciate it. And also consider subscribing to the channel for more weekly Higurashi reactions. And with that all out of the way, let's get right into this episode. I of course need to give a massive thank you to Loot Crate for sponsoring today's video. So, to all of you weebs, geeks, fanboys, and fangirls out there, if you are looking for cool collectibles to spice up your collection, like this one I have behind me, or if you're looking for some cool apparel and accessories to show off your favorite series, then look no further because Loot Crate has exactly what you are looking for. Loot Crate is a subscription service where you can order special crates, and these special crates all carry collectibles from all different corners of fiction. These special crates touch on everything from anime crates, to gaming crates, to Harry Potter crates, to comic crates, WWE crates, Rick and Morty crates, and even just just straight up apparel crates if you like to collect t-shirts and socks like me. Now what makes Loot Crate cool is that every month a new crate is shipped right to your front door and you never know what's inside exactly until you open the crate for yourself. Now if you would like to get your hands on a crate for yourself, make sure to go into the description and click the first link down there that you see. It'll take you straight to the Loot Crate website where you can look through all of the different crates and choose any one that you find interesting but do not forget to use code crow 15 to get 15 percent off of your order again that is code crow 15 to get 15 percent off of your entire order 
All right, so here I have episode eight of Sotsu pulled up. And do not forget before we get into this that you can always head over to the Patreon, join for as low as $2 and get access to all of my uncut reactions. But whenever you guys are ready, we'll be starting this episode in three, two, one, go. I got to turn that down. I had my volume on maximum overdrive right there. All right, let's see. It's quiet. Too quiet. All right, she's packing her bags, it seems. No comment? Nothing to say, Satoko? I think it's because there's a part of her that agrees with him. Ooh? We're getting new info here. Except, of course, this is a lie that she made up. Oh man, and you can see how worried Rika is. Man. Oh, what's going on here? Oh, that Tepe's back. Oh, man, it's spreading like wildfire. Man. Dude, this is so interesting. I'm just like fascinated right now with where the heck this is gonna go. I mean, I think we know the ending. We know the, like, um, I believe this arc ends with, um, I guess, Keiichi seeing Tepe come into, uh, Satoko's, or let me take it way back to the, I guess, start of the ending. Which is the fact that we finally managed to send some help over to Satoko. I believe Detective Delicious heads over there and he talks to Tepe and he supposedly sorts everything out. And then Satoko approaches Keiichi and she says like, hey, I want you to come with me. I want to show you something. And then when they get into her house, that's when he gets smacked over the head by Tepe, which we thought we got rid of. And maybe we actually did, but, and maybe, I think there were some people, uh, theorizing that it wasn't actually Tepe. Because we know that Keiichi tends to overdramatize things and maybe even hallucinate a bit. So maybe that wasn't actually, uh, Tepe that he saw there. But, um, outside of that, later on into the episode, we see... That not only Tepe was potentially cursed, but Detective Delicious, our boy, Detective Delicious, was also cursed. So, I wonder, did Satoko manage to inject two people? Or did something else happen to Tepe? And look, he's actually worried about her.
Wait, is he wearing an apron? We're actually getting a redemption arc Tepe here. Oh wow! Why were they rushing over there? Oh, cause they were late. I'm I'm st I'm stupid. Okay, <laughs> answered my own question. Wait, I'm gonna need a bit more context. And look, she's just going absolutely nuts right now. Rena in cute mode. See, but Mio knows. And here's the meetup spot. And look, man, she is. Oh, man! She has Rika eating out of the palm of her hand. She had all of us eating out of her hand, honestly. During go. Dude, it's like, <laughs> it's so sad for Nika, but I don't know, it's, there's a part of it that's kind of funny, just watching Satoko, like, pretend, because we know that she's lying and she's like, uh, I guess I'm just gonna have to run these errands, and I'll be at school when I'm done, okay, Satoko? It's like, alright, alright, we know what you're doing here. And look, she didn't show up. So did she actually go back home, or is she... plotting? Because she did tell, um, Tepe she was going to school. And here we get into it. Oh, see? Wow, she's pulling the Rena. She's eavesdropping on him from right outside the door. Oh, she messed her own face up. This is next level. This is next level. She is really committed to this act. What if all of her injury- OH MY GOD! What if all of her injuries were self-inflicted? And then when she went home, she just played it off as the villagers messing with her. To Tepe. Holy crap! Wow. What an insane, like, multifaceted plan Satoko has here. I mean, she's had plenty of time to think it through.
Now it's the move. Oh my god! Wait! Holy crap, it all makes sense now. Dude. Dude. Okay. So this makes perfect sense because we know that in this timeline, some more um, child welfare workers are sent to their home and they don't find anything suspicious or any evidence of her being abused. And that's because it actually what? Satoko, are you good? Oh my God, she's losing it. Dang, so he actually wasn't abusing her, and that's why it was so hard to um, lock up Tepe for anything. And now look. She's dirtying herself up, and she's probably going to show this to Tepe. And he's going to freak out. Oh my god, man! This is genius! Dude. I'm losing my mind right now. God, man, Tepe, dude, he cares so much. He really has changed. I think it's undeniable at this point. Even though he's, like, kind of being manipulated by Satoko right now, I have a really bad feeling that this is going to end badly for Tepe. Like, I feel like she's going to stab him in the back. Because we know that she doesn't care about anyone except for Rika at this current point in time. And I'm sure she's willing to throw anyone under the bus, even Redemption Arc Tepe, who genuinely cares about her, in order to achieve her goals. We have a concerned Chie Sensei. <laughs> Dude, Cage, you man, he said, screw studying. <laughs> this is way more important.
And now we know why Tepe looks so angry all the time. It's because he believes that the villagers are all out here picking on Sotoko and treating her like trash. Oh snap, wait, Satoko? Oh wow, so she didn't exactly say yes, but she didn't say no either. Oh, and now she's on her way here. Oh my god, dude, Sotoko! She's nuts! Oh my god, she's like 300 IQ! This kid is a mastermind. Look at this, man, playing everyone like a fiddle. She's so little, dude. She's like at his waist. Holy crap. She's so small. Man, and to think we thought that Tefe was hiding something when we saw this in Go. Hmm. Also, I thought it was kind of cute how Rana was like holding Keiichi back. Because she knew once he gets his hand on that bat, he's ending someone. Oh my god! The plot thickens! Man, okay, I've thought of my question of the day. Hopefully I remember it. But, um... Man. Like, Tepe. Wow, he is really surprising me in this episode. Like, I knew he changed before, but, like, dude. You'd never believe that he was abusive if you've only seen Tepe in 
this like framing in Sotsu. And I think, holy crap, what makes this so crazy is that a lot of the time, Satoko isn't really lying. She's just telling half-truths. Like with her having to live with uh, Tepe, that was like a half-truth. Oh my gosh. With the villagers not liking the Hojo family. Like, oh man. Mm-hmm. Providing a lot of entertainment for her. I remember that. Wow! What? Wait, wait, wait. What is going on here? I completely forgot about this part. Wait, so she's not faking this, right? Something's actually wrong with her? Or is she playing... I don't know. I think it'd be hard for her to make herself vomit like that. What the hell is going on? Jesus Christ, man. This still hurts. And we've seen this before already. An Aoa song. Dude, I wonder if there was some some truth to what was going on right there. Like what Satoko was saying when she was panicking like that. I wonder if there was some truth in how she was feeling there. Like, I don't know. I don't know, like, how do I explain it? We know that Satoko's broken. And for quite a while now, she's seemed pretty calm and composed. And, like, very calculated in her actions throughout these past couple timelines. But what if the, like, you know, innocent little girl Satoko that she's been suppressing this whole time... What if she slipped out right there? What if that was actually, like, her panicking? And also, Eiwa-san, she said that she's no longer human. She's become a witch now. Which, I don't know what that means. I'm sure you guys that have read all of the visual novel and that have um, read through Umineko, you probably have a better idea than I do. But this is fascinating to me. Um, so now that just leads me, or that gives me two questions. Um, are there any other witches that we've bumped into? Like, is, um, I don't know, is Han Yu a witch? Is Aoi san a witch? And now Satoko's becoming one? And if Satoko's becoming one, that leads me to wonder if Rika is one as well. Because they're both in very similar situations. The only difference is their uh, uses of their ability to time loop are for different reasons. Rika is trying to save everyone, and Satoko is trying to, I guess, uh, preserve the life that she had before. Her and Rika went to go to St. Lucia and everything. So I guess you could say like Satoko's doing it for a more selfish reason. And uh, Rika is doing it for a more selfless reason. Which 
brings us back to what I said way back in Go, Satoko and Rika, they're just like two opposite sides of the same coin. This is so fascinating, man. And then when Satoko started panicking, like, oh man, it, this, it, it's so crazy. Because when you see this happen in Go, you're like, oh man, she's like traumatized. She's freaking out from all the trauma that she's experienced with Tepe. But then here, I don't know what's going on. Because a part of me wants to believe that maybe she's faking it. Because Keiichi like went to like pat her in the head and then she slapped his hand away. And she... Um, you know, started freaking out, this would be the perfect way for her to try to convince everyone that Tepe is still abusing her. However, when we saw her holding her head, her eyes were like flashing red and going back to normal and like flipping back and forth. So that leads me to believe that that was out of her control. On top of that, she just randomly vomited which I don't think she's mastered this art of being able to make herself vomit all for this plan. I think that was involuntary. And there's, I think there's two possible outcomes. I think either her body is just kind of freaking out and she's playing it off as like, how do I explain it? She's trying to incorporate that into her plan or this is all completely involuntary and Satoko didn't intend for any of this to happen when it came to her panicking and her vomiting and her freaking out and you know calling out for her brother like I think all of this may have been involuntary and I, I still think the craziest thing is the fact that Aoa-san said she's no longer human she's becoming a witch so I wonder if she's just referring to her behavior and she's saying like Satoko's kind of lost her humanity and now she's become some sort of monster or if her body is like going through some sort of process and she's finally fully transforming into whatever the heck a witch is. But man, we have a lot to learn. Sotsu is definitely heating up and also before I forget, my question of the day for you guys is going to be what do you think or how do you think Satoko truly feels about Tepe? Do you think that how much Tepe like cares about her and how much he's going out of his way to protect her, do you think that that's actually like hitting her core and like she's beginning to believe like wow, Tepe really has changed? Or do you think she's just disregarding everything? Rika's the only person she cares about, and even though Tepe seems like a much better person now, she's not gonna forgive him for all of the crap that he's done in the past. Let me know what you think Satoko truly feels, because I think right now, more than ever, none of us have any idea as to what's going on in Satoko's head, what she's truly thinking. I don't think any of us have any idea, so let me know what your, I guess, uh, theories are as to how she feels about Tepe and his change and everything. But with that, I'm going to end the episode here. Thank you all so much for watching this far into the video. If you did, make sure to leave a like if you enjoyed, comment your thoughts on the episode down below, and subscribe for more Saishoni content. And with that, I'm going to head out, so I'll catch you all in the next one. Have a good one.